Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to take a look at how we can load data into the PostgreSQL database that's not spatial. That's just a single table. And there's a number of ways that this can be done. I'm going to talk in general about two of them. But then I'm just going to show you how to do it in QGIS and I think that's easiest. So one way and the normal way that people get data into PostgreSQL is to convert the data to a CSV file and then import it using the copy command. And if you want to do it this way, you can just Google import CSV file into PostgreSQL or something like that. There's a lot of information out there about how to do that. Another way of doing it is using that standalone PostGIS importer because that will also import, besides the shape file, it will import a DBF table. So if you have a table that's in DBF format, you can use that. But what I'm going to demonstrate to you is how to get data from an Excel spreadsheet into QGIS and then from QGIS we can import it into the database. And I think that's the easiest and most flexible solution just because almost everybody has Excel or at least something that's compatible with Excel. And Excel can read table data in just about any kind of format. And QGIS can read Excel tables. So it's pretty easy to get non-spatial data into QGIS using Excel. And once it's in QGIS as a table, then it's really easy to import that into the PostgreSQL database. So in the course resources on Udemy for this lecture, there should be a file called sdb underscore surveys dot zip. You'll want to download that and copy it to whatever directory you're using as a working directory for this course. And so this is my working directory. I have this sdb surveys dot zip in here and I'm just going to unzip it using 7-zip. Again, you can use whatever software you normally use to unzip files. And once I do that, see I have three files. This is Bald Eagle Surveys, Burring Owl Surveys, and Raptor Surveys. And this is non-spatial tabular data. It reflects surveys that people have gone out and done on each one of these nest or burring owl habitats. They go out once a week and check to see what the status of that nest is. And we want to bring this data into a PostgreSQL database so we can join it with our spatial data and extract more information from it. So let's go to QGIS, and this is just where we left off in the last lecture. If you're not here, it's not super important, because all we're going to do is open our Data Source Manager, click on Vector, we'll leave our source type as File, and then we're going to browse to our data directory. Mine is right here. And then I'm going to select these three different Excel spreadsheets, and click Open, and then Add, and then Close. And so here we see these three different tables. And I had saved each table to a separate spreadsheet. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure what would happen if you had different tabs with each tab of different data. I assume it would come in because this survey results was in the name of the tab in that Excel spreadsheet. Again, I'm not 100% certain. You can play around with it or it's, it's really easy just, just to take the data in one tab and create its own spreadsheet just for the purpose of importing. If you're used to working in Excel, and most people are. So I can open the attribute table for these, and I see we have a bunch of data. Each one has about 2,000 survey results. Each one has its own unique identifier in an ID column. Each one has a nest or habitat column that relates to the nest or habitat ID in the spatial data. And then we have some information about who conducted the survey, the date the survey was conducted, and the result of the survey. So it's very simple. So now that we have this in Excel, we can go to our DB Manager plugin, go into our SDB course connection under PostGIS, and into the public schema, and then I'm going to click this Import button again. This is exactly like importing spatial data. Everything that's in a Layers panel is available in this Input combo box, so we can just select one of the tables. We have to give it a name, so I'm going to call it this one, Bald Eagle Surveys, again everything lowercase, and then click OK. It says import was successful, and I'm going to do the same thing for these other two. Burring Al, I'll give it a name, B-U-O-W-L underscore surveys, click OK, and one more time for the Raptor Surveys. And click OK. This is the relation Raptor surveys already exist. 
So in my case, I had already put this Raptor survey data in when I was testing this process. Uh, and I didn't bother going in and deleting it from the database. So that's why I'm getting this error, but you shouldn't get it. So that's it. We're done. We can verify if we want in QGIS, or we can look at it in the database manager. Go to PostGIS, and then the connection, and you'll see we have Bald Eagle Nest, that's point data. Bald Eagle Surveys, that's non-spatial data. Same thing for Burring Owl and Raptor Nest. And you can also see it right in the browser panel. It's the same way. And we have a Bald Eagle Nest, that's point data. Bald Eagle Surveys, that's non-spatial data. So that's it. We have some non-spatial survey data that we can link to our spatial data. And we'll be doing that in different ways throughout the course. But I wanted to make sure that I showed you how to do this. And hopefully you'll see, you'll understand why. Because it's really easy to integrate non-spatial data with spatial data in a spatial database like PostGIS. And we can do things with SQL statements using a spatial database than it would be using just a straight up desktop GIS software like ArcGIS or QGIS. So thanks for listening. The next lecture we're going to look at some of the variety of clients that we can use, interact with these databases through a SQL statement. And we'll see you then.